Pac-Man. Arguably one of the most ubiquitous gaming icons possible. Although the game itself and the character are both incredibly well known, the cut content and betas of these games are largely unknown to many. So, in this really big episode, which I'm probably never going to do again, I'm never going to do a big episode like this again, this was terrible, ending me, just remember that, just don't do a big episode like this again, please enjoy the cut content of the original Pac-Man arcade series. Yeah, that's right. The original Pac-Man did actually have a series of sorts, albeit in the arcades. Specifically, we're going over the game releases in the arcades that were released from 1980 to 1987, so about seven years. For the original Pac-Man, this unused graphic is of an unnamed explosion found within the game's files. The graphic used an incorrect palette and was removed from Pac-Man Plus and was replaced with the 3200 3, points score. This sprite would later be used in the Namco Museum Volume 1, the character slideshow under the name Blast, using a corrected palette. The sprite, despite being unused, was actually used in Junior Pac-Man, albeit with two other palettes and it being edited in-game. These three dots are present in the game's graphic data. While the first two are used in-game, the pellet and the larger power pellet, the sprites also show a medium-sized pellet in between the two. Now because Pac-Man Plus and Ms. Pac-Man both use the same code, because they are essentially the same game, just edited. The medium dot does appear in both Pac-Man Plus and Ms. Pac-Man, albeit in code. But in all three games, it goes unused. Pac-Man Jr., much like the Blast Sprite, would also have this item appear, but as a bonus item. This graphic shows an easter egg that can be found in the service menu. If you quickly toggle the mode on and off, a grid will appear on screen. Holding both player 1 and player 2 start buttons, then toggling the service mode on and off a second time to keep the grid on screen, and then finally using the joysticks, press the following inputs shown on screen. If done correctly, this sprite will appear on screen. The Made by Namco text is made with red power pellets in the original ROM. Inputting this exact same combination and easter egg in Pac-Man Plus will show the same exact text, but in yellow. Game Revisions So Pac-Man Plus was what one might call a mod or a hack in the modern day, but back then was called a official conversion kit. This kit was made by Bally Midway in 1982. Bally Midway at the time were the publishers for Namco's games in the US. They, the game itself had a few small but noticeable differences from the original Namco code, including the majority of differences in the sprites, featuring the fruit being replaced by more modern US a items. Only the apple and galaxian fruits, however, remained unchanged. Ghosts also now have a wider, more sure appearance, a more stout appearance with a leaf out of their heads when scared, for seemingly no reason. My theory is that they were made this way to make them look less human-like, or I assume it was made them look less like people and more like food, perhaps? I don't know. Pac-Man and the Super Pac-Man are touched up for a much cleaner look and smoother animation. Point values are yellow instead of blue. The game is also overall much harder right off the bat due to the ghost being far faster and far more aggressive. The ghosts also have a much longer scare phase and the power pellet is way more unpredictable. So for example, sometimes it will do exactly what you think it is, which is all four ghosts get spooked and 
yeah, it's, you can eat them. However, as you can see here, sometimes only three ghosts will get scared, while the fourth one will change directions bizarrely enough. Or another weird option would be that the maze's walls turn invisible for the duration of the power pellet phase, or if you eat an item in the game, which is very weird, and even weirder. Or, and this is a really creepy one, the ghost gets scared, but everything goes invisible. And it, it, it creeped me out the first time I saw it. It, it, it was like, I was like, wait, what? And yeah, it was just really weird. It was a really weird game, man. Regional differences. The names of the four famous ghosts, Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde, are different from the Japanese release. Now, the ghost names should be known by just about everyone. Um, I, I'm not going to go out of my way to, to tell you the names. You, you know the names. You've played this game. You know the names. But on the off chance you just don't know anything about Pac-Man, the U.S. names are as follows. Blinky, a.k.a. Shadow. Pinky, a.k.a. Speedy. Inky, a.k.a. Bashful. And Clyde, a.k.a. Pokey. Now, while you probably have heard these names a million times before, as well as their nicknames, the Japanese ones are as follows, and in comparison to US names, are a bit more fitting. I was originally going to just say the names, but uh, yeah, that, that, that first version of the audio was just cringe, so I'm just going to show you the Japanese names, and I'll just, and just say the rough translations, which are, in order, Blinky, which is meaning chase. Pinkies meant ambush. Inkies was fickle. And Clyde was plain dumb. Their nicknames are also different, referencing the colors except for Clyde's, whose nickname in Japan is Guzuta. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. From the word Guza Guza which is an adjective that roughly translates to slow or languid, which is apparently yet another word for lax, which makes sense given Clyde was always seen as a dopey, kind of slow, slower one of the group. Now continuing with the wordplay trend, uh, the ghosts all have alternate ghost names that are also shown here in the US version. And these names are accessed via a deep IP switch aptly named Alternate Ghost Name. Now, while the US version has all of these dumbed out, the Japanese character names have all been used in all versions of the Pac-Man Arrangement, which is a, another arcade game that also is a Pac-Man sort of mod, essentially. Unused graphics. This sprite from the game Bosconian is found in the game's graphic files. The sprite, which is a battle station for those of you who haven't played Bosconian, really fun game, may have been intended to be used as a point giving item or food for Pac Man. Despite not being used, it does technically get used at the game's startup for a very small split second. It's very much like the Blast Sprite from the vanilla Pac Man game, and like the Blast Sprite, it also appears in what is presumed to be the corrected palette in the Namco Museum, this time Volume 2's character slideshow. This graphic, while looking like junk data, is actually a small easter egg of some of the game's developers. Two of the game's developers, in fact. If the image is flipped, mirrored, and placed correctly, they spell out Fukutani Shinochi and Yamashiti. It's this word up here. And Namco with a space. <laughs> um, Fukutani was a programmer for Super Pac Man, as well as a number of Namco games. While this developer was a, the planner for both this game and another game we'll talk about in a minute. Hidden text. In both the original Namco and Midway versions of Super Pac Man, 
Inputting the secret code shown here, while both the super speed button is pressed and the service mode is on, reveals this string of text saying 1982 Namco LTD. This was used in the Japanese Namco original, but because Bally Midway, as I said, owned the rights to use Pac-Man internationally and distribute those games internationally, the text was changed on screen to Bally Midway 1980-1982. The Namco text still exists, albeit as an easter egg. So, to end this, I'll briefly touch on two oddities. For one, there is a hidden dev code that can be used to skip the level you're on. Now, you might expect this to be a basic cheat code, but no. Essentially, you have to press the super speed button. After flipping the DIP switch, number 8, a uh, quick Google search showed me that a DIP switch is a is on a small chip on the motherboard, so this is not possible on main. This is only possible if you just so happen to have the original arcade board. I don't think anyone has that, but assuming you do, you could do this. Um, given the fact that this cheat requires the original hardware to be used as stated, it's obvious that it goes completely unused. And finally, most of the Pac-Man sprites in this game have a blue outline that isn't seen in-game due to the color palette. pac and pal also called Pac-Man and Chomp Chomp, is a very special game for two reasons. For one, it's one of the weirder Pac-Man games that has a character shown here, that steals fruit and gives it to the ghosts. It's also, to some, a game where a stupid, conniving piece of shit. No, I'm joking, it's actually, he's a wonderful character. Uh, a dog, named Chomp Chomp, takes fruit from Pac-Man and gives it to the ghost without realizing it. It's also very special because unlike the others in the arcade series, this was only available in plug-and-play TV consoles and Namco Museum collections. I myself have vividly, I vividly remember playing this gun alongside other Pac-Man games in the series, specifically with a plug-and-play called Namco Classics. I think it was called that. I, I have it on screen. Uh, I don't think it's called Namco Classics. Uh, also, it's not really available anymore. A lot of these plug and plays just aren't available anymore. They were made by a company called Jack Specific, who, from if you've ever watched John Tron's plug and play TV game video, they're the ones who are really famous for making all those plug and plays. Um, I'm not really sure if this particular plug and play is even on sale anymore, but I, I, it, it might be out there somewhere. I'm more than certain it is. Unused graphics. For Pack and Pal, this image is an animation sprite sheet showing a ghost with a comically large lump on his head. My guess, and this is just a theory, mind you, that it's meant to be a sort of comical old school trope, specifically the trope of a character in a cartoon or anime getting bonked on the head and then getting a bump. Given it's Japan, it's more likely the latter since that was a very popular joke back in the day, meaning that quite possibly when hitting a power pellet, getting a power pellet, this would imply that a hammer-like power-up could have potentially been used or was potentially an idea for a power-up for Pac-Man. Though again, this is just a theory and probably isn't true. The graphic shown here, while looking like a jumble of text, is actually Japanese that again roughly translates to, it's this guy again, for YY and G. Now this had me stumped for some time until I did a little bit of researching. According to the cutting room floor and my own research, the NG in the graphic refers to potentially Namco Community Magazine NG. This was a magazine owned by Namco themselves that was in distribution at the time. And the NG stands for Namco Games, so it's Namco Community Magazine Namco Games. Bit repetitive, but hey. Uh, the developer shown here also refers to this developer, and he was a planner for both this game and Super Pac-Man. Now the graphic itself is more than likely put in to take up extra space in the ROM. This is compounded by the fact that this graphic is only in Pac-Man and Chomp Chomp, which is the Japanese version of the game. 
as well as this, the fact that it overwrites and replaces the Pack and Pal title card in the game's screen graphics. Since these old games didn't really have a lot of space on the ROM, every kilobyte was very valuable, so they had to fill up with something. Finally, despite my joking hostility to Chomp Chomp, there's actually a bit of a, a somewhat sad story with Pac-Man Chomp Chomp's title card. You see, Pac-Man and Chomp Chomp were originally going to be localized from Japan to the US as a separate game. However, the game became a Japanese exclusive, with this title card being the only surviving thing from that build in the Japanese version. Now you may be wondering, who is this Chomp Chomp I keep referring to and showing on screen? Well, some of you might recognize him because he's actually Pac-Man's dog from the old school Hanna-Barbera Pac-Man cartoons. Now, the reason why Pac-Man Chomp Chomp were going to be localized in the US is because at the time, Hanna-Barbera had a cartoon that had Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Junior Pac-Man, all those Pac-Man, and Chomp Chomp, and so the game was sort of meant to be a tie-in to that game. And the game's localization was essentially finished aside from a few missing graphics. However, it didn't do well at test sites, so it was canned. I assume the gameplay was essentially just pack and pal given that Chomp Chomp would have replaced the character Minru, who is the pal you see on screen and in game. Now, this game, I'm more than certain very few people actually even recognize or even remember. I certainly have never played it up until this point. What you're seeing right now is my first time actually playing it. Arguably the most obscure game in the original arcade series, as it hasn't been released much outside of arcades. It's mainly been snubbed by multiple uh, collections. This is mainly because of the inclusion of Miss Pac-Man, and the moment I said Miss Pac-Man, you should immediately realize why this game is so obscure. However, again, for those of you who have not seen um, Pac-Man World by... Oh, what's his name? Editor me, show him on screen. It's this guy. He's a really cool YouTuber. Definitely subscribe to him. Shout out to him. But basically, uh, Miss Pac-Man during the early arcade days was technically owned, but not quite owned by Namco. It's a big legal mess, but the long and short of it is that because Namco didn't technically copyright these characters, they were a shared copyright with the original game's developers of the mod Miss Pac-Man, and Namco was like, well, this mod seems so cool, we'll let, we'll let it slide. We'll have a little special doctrine that says, hey, for every bit of money that we get from this arcade, you can also have some too. Now, this was very good up until recently, where the character's copyright was in flux because the game's rights were acquired by At Games, and now the character's in the same position as Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, which is a weird parallel, but trust me when I say both of them are essentially in the same boat, which is that they're in an awkward legal limbo where neither side can really use the character because one owns part of another and it's very difficult. So with that being said, another bit of that was Junior Pac-Man. And because Ms. Pac-Man is kind of integral to the story of this game, and also the fact that the gameplay also was a bit odd, so trying to emulate it is a bit difficult, apparently. I don't know how, because I emulated it just fine. But again, because of that, and because of a few other legal loopholes, or legal uh, mishaps, a couple of other games in the arcade series were not, haven't been available since for being played. For example, Baby Pac-Man and Professor Pac-Man are also in the same boat. Now, also unique to this particular game, Junior Pac-Man, is that this is actually one of the few games that was not developed by Namco. At least the arcade Pac-Man game not developed by Namco, but by a company called General Computer Corporation. Now this company is apparently defunct since, it's been defunct since 2015, but in the 1980s, 
They started out making mod kits for arcade games around this time before making this game. And originally they were making a game called Baby Pac-Man, which eventually became Junior Pac-Man. But Baby Pac-Man, I'll explain in a bit why they didn't pick ba Baby Pac-Man, they just kept Junior Pac-Man. Okay, with all that out of the way, unused graphics. For Junior Pac-Man, this graphic shows a number of toy sprites, the game's version of the fruit sprites. These are, in order, a skateboard, a cowboy hat, which appears twice, a rattle, a baby bottle, pogo stick, and a pacifier. These are all leftovers from the aforementioned Pac-Baby, which is the early name for Junior Pac-Man during its development. This graphic shows both an unused drum set graphic and an early version of the cat sprite. This graphic shows two large red circles. While their use is unknown, my guess is that they were going to be planned to be power-ups or the equivalent of power pellets because these red dots are very similar to the green dots seen in Super Pac-Man, in my opinion. This sprite, which I initially confused to be a possible early version of Blinky, but after researching, it was actually a unused sprite for a separate character that is mentioned, or actually not mentioned, shown in game called Yum Yum. Now, who, who is this character? I don't blame you if you don't know. This is her only video game appearance aside from a small reference cameo in some promotional art. Yum Yum is the daughter of Blinky. I don't know who the mother is, I'm just gonna go with it. The daughter of Blinky, and is seen in the cutscene shown here where she falls in love with Junior Pac-Man. And this is the entire plot of the game, by the way, which, uh, looking back, is very hilarious. I, I find that oh so hilarious. It's very funny. This graphic shown here is a part of the Namco logo the CO, which is a leftover from the original Pac-Man. Also from the original Pac-Man, this key fruit shown here is also unused. Finally, we have the two strangest sprites. These two sprites are a tiny white X in a graphic that says Moby. Now it's presumed that both of these graphics were made to basically just fill up space in the ROM because they don't really seem to serve any real purpose. Unused code. Now, this string of code shown here, it's a screenshot, is towards the end of the ROM's data, in what appears to be source code. Now, like the unused toy graphics, the several mentions of the word baby are likely fragments of the Pac Baby name that was used during Junior Pac Man's early development. Finally, like with other games in the series, the sprite of the cat has a blue outline. However, due to the palette in-game, it goes completely unused. The final game in the arcade series, or just the one we're going to finish talking about, that was released in 1987, December 1987 to be precise, in the US and in Japan it was released in November 30th, Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, is yet another Pac-Man arcade game and it differs from the others from Pac-Man's unique ability to jump as well as being the first Pac-Man to be in 3D. Technically 3D. It's more like Doom where it's 2.5D and not actual 3D. There's also six other ghosts, or four of the ghosts, and it brings the total up to 11 ghosts actually, believe it or not. And some of these ghosts can actually jump and their names are also on screen. I do not know what their particular um, behaviors are compared to the originals. If I'm not mistaken, the originals act like the originals, but still. Unused graphics. For the final game in the series, some of these larger sizes of the Pac-Man head, shown here, are seen on the title screen in the international version. While the third one has its own highlighted graphic, it's just a duplicate of one of the smaller ones and doesn't actually fit properly because 
The full sprite is made by layering the middle and the second, the two middle sprites into one sprite. Equally shown here is some differently sized ghost sprites from the tile screen again, and the jungly steps intermission screen in all versions. The different sizes of the ghosts are used compared to the equivalent Pac-Man graphic. Shown here are unused graphics for the Pac-Land-based Pac-Man shown on the high score screen in the international versions of the game. Similarly, some of the ghost icons from Pac-Land also appear as placeholders for the shaded ones seen in game. Finally, we have a HUD icon for the Galaxian special item. Now, unlike the original Pac-Man clones and vanilla Pac-Man, the Galaxian is not a regular fruit in the game, and I don't even think it appears, so this goes completely unused. Regional differences. This one's going to be kind of long. So the reason why I kept saying international version and not say just no version or just all the versions is because in comparison to the international version, the Japanese version apparently is an earlier build that contains several differences from the international version. Bizarrely enough, most modern re-releases of the game that you've played are probably based on the Japanese version of the game, not the international version, which is very weird. This one is the international version you're seeing right now. I did not find the Japanese version. I do not know where it is. Uh, I'll, I don't know where it is. The general changes include the tile screen not having the Pac-Man ghost sprites. The sprites are in the ROM but are unused. All other unused graphics from the international version can also be found in the Japanese version. This version also lacks a high score table. Block Town, which is the first world, has two levels in the Japanese version, and it's reduced to one in the international one. The other levels in the first loop all have three levels in the Japanese version and two in the international version. The default high score is 50,000, while in the international it's twice the amount as 100,000. After losing a life, in the international version it slowly darkens the background into the game over screen. The Japanese version just stays in a sepia tone before going to the game over screen. Both continue and level select are not enabled at the same time, instead offering them as two separate options. The Japanese version combines them into a single option named play mode with three possible choices, which are continue, enables continues, which always starts the game back to round one, select, which is the level selecting game and disables continues, or retry first, which disables both features, which is very weird. The international version also has an auto data sampling feature that keeps track of playtime, number of deaths in each level, and number of game overs in each level. It's reached by holding the service coin switch and turning off the test switch while in the test menu, which for people who have main, hold 9 and then push F2 on main. This feature does not exist in the Japanese version. Uh, overall, as you can tell, it's a downgrade, which I, I do not understand. I, I don't get that. Also, one last bit, the level select, the player must hold jump and push the start button into the tile screen. Unused audio. There isn't much to the unused audio, just a single track. Now this main track that is called Block Town, very nice music, is slightly different in the Japanese version. The Japanese version has more vibrato when playing along the notes, and the international version does not have this. Also, there are many differences in the stereo alignment of the instruments compared to the international version. Take a listen. Ending sequences. 
This is kind of its own thing, but it was kind of lumped into audio for some reason on the cutting room floor. But in the ending sequences for the Japanese version of the game, it shows an endless stream of blue blobs, several shadows of ghosts, a few numbers, and a few Pac-Man shapes. This is most likely a mistake, and it was fixed to display the actual credits in the international version. The international version also shows game over at the end of the credits. The Japanese version just resets to the attract mode. Whew! Alright, and folks, that was all seven arcade games that we have betas and cut content data for. Thank you all for watching. I am so very sorry this took so long to uh, come out. I was going through Christmas and the New Year's with the family. I uh, kind of got a little sidetracked. I, I tend to kind of procrastinate. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, originally I was actually just going to originally record this, but then the audio just sounded like, like crap and I had a really cringy joke in there and just... It just wasn't very good. It wasn't very clear. So this should be a more cleaned up version. Editing should be a lot sharper and more on point-ish. And yeah, um, probably not going to do a big multi-game series thing like this. Uh, I probably will finish Pac-Man. I probably will do Pac-Man again because I love that series. Uh, first series I ever played, by the way, as a kid. First ever. Uh, but yeah, probably going to do something more simple. Like, uh, maybe I'll do that cookie run thing. Uh, but I'd love to know what you all think. What should I pick next for the, uh, for the cut content series that I'm making right now? Uh, really just any game on the cutting room floor that has any sort of beta or whatever, whatever interesting thing. Please do not make it a super big game, but also don't make it like a tiny, like, five second video game thing. Um, but yeah, again, uh, for people, just type down in the comments what game you want me to cover next from the cutting room floor. And thank you all for watching, and goodbye.